Hello everybody and welcome back. I hope you've all had a fantastic Christmas and New Year. Now that Monday has rolled around again, it's Morgana here once more today and I'm really excited to share with you my latest painting, A Glimpse of Spring. I'm also really excited to share with you something that is new to me personally. Uh, I was gifted this lovely little block of Arsh watercolour paper for Christmas and this is my first time using a watercolour block. I've only ever used pads and loose paper before so uh, I'm really quite thrilled and I've also never worked on Arsh cold press before, uh, only rough so uh, this is a double first for me. For anyone who's unfamiliar with um, a block you can see here that the paper has been drummed on all sides except for this little space that's been left at the top. You can see there that uh, that is where you pop in a knife, like a, a little pen knife such as my <laughs> one that I've got here ready to hand, uh, or a palette knife or something like that, uh, which you can separate your top sheet of paper off once you've done the painting. Uh, you can see that the paper is a lovely texture, it's uh, a little smoother and more regular than the uh, rough ash paper I'm used to uh, and I've already sketched out my uh, painting for today which is this sweet little clump of spring snowdrops. So to prepare for painting uh, I've laid the block flat on some newspaper today uh, and I've used Pebio drawing gum to just mask out the flowers and the leaves and the stalks so that I don't need to worry about them while I'm putting in my background. Uh, the colours I'm using today are here on screen. I'll also put a full uh, equipment list in the uh, video description below. One of the lovely things about working on this size uh, is that I'm able to actually have my palette uh, on camera to share with you for once today, so uh, I hope that will be useful. Uh, but as you can see, I'm beginning by just wetting uh, most of the paper using a large wash brush. Uh, I'm just steering clear of the lower part where I've used a pencil line to just mark out where the snowy ground is going to be. And I want to keep that mostly white uh, for the snow. So to begin with, I'm just focusing on really getting that water in the right place. And I'm going to just leave it for a moment to uh, sink in and then I'm going to paint the background wet and wet. So I'm beginning today with one of my favourite colours. This is quinacridone gold or quin gold as it's more commonly called uh, and it's such a lovely bright vibrant golden colour um, that I just felt the uh, urge to sort of splash it around a bit I uh, just wanted a nice sort of almost glow of gold uh, against this lovely sort of blue and green background that I have planned. So you can see I'm using a mop brush to just uh, splash it on quite freely uh, onto the paper that is already wet. So we're going to be working uh, wet and wet. Uh, and now I'm just introducing another colour. So this is turquoise and this is the uh, sort of the main colour that I'm going to be using for the background today as it has that lovely sort of brightness to it, that vibrancy that I'm looking for in this sort of bright spring painting. I'm also laying it on quite thick as I hope you can see. Uh, I'm relying on the water that's already on the paper to do some of the diffusion for me so you can see that I'm using tube paint and just splashing it straight on to the paper and we get this lovely rich colour. I'm placing the blue around the yellow and allowing it to blend a little here just so that we get some uh, patches of this really bright uh, and vivid green that these two colours make but for the most part I'm just sort of putting the turquoise around the gold and not blending it too much uh, that will come a little later. And here you can see I'm just roughly marking out the, uh, the place where the ground will be, just against the sky. 
Uh, and now I'm just introducing another colour. This is some ultramarine blue. <laughs> Mine has dried a little bit, so you can see I'm working, having to work quite hard to get it up off my palette and onto the paper. Uh, but I think the ultramarine just adds that extra little bit of depth uh, into the blue tones of this painting. It's a really lovely colour and you can see it just blends almost seamlessly into the turquoise and just gives it a little extra uh, boost of richness. Now I'm just introducing some lines here, little streaks that are going to soften down as you can see the paper is still very wet. Uh, just the uh, hint perhaps of some other leaves and grasses peeping from behind these main flowers. And I'm not using a green to do this, as you can see I have just mixed a little of the blues in with the Quin Gold uh, which has created this lovely sort of bright natural looking green. Uh, the observant among you will notice there is some green paint on my palette, a little blob there just below the blue, that's my emergency green I call it, that's a little bit of sap green uh, that I didn't end up using at all for this painting, but I always uh, grab myself a pre-made green just in case my mixes don't work. So all I'm doing at this point is just really moving the paint around whilst it's all still wet. Uh, that's one of the lovely things about uh, cotton paper is that you do get some time to do this. The paper is nice and sturdy and uh, as you can see the block is holding it nice and firmly in place whilst I'm painting. There's no buckling at all going on here which is uh, really really nice. So now I'm using my fan brush to introduce a little extra Quin Gold uh, and I'm just going to uh, gently spatter a few droplets over the uh, top part of this painting just to begin working on getting some really nice texture into this backdrop. Uh, nothing too heavy, just a little light spattering uh, and because of course we're doing it wet and wet those uh, marks are going to soften down and diffuse as they hit the water. And this process is one I'm going to repeat with a little bit of white gouache. There it goes, you can see that almost as soon as it hits the paper, the little droplets are softening down and spreading out uh, really nicely, looking lovely and soft. Uh, perhaps like a little, uh, a little flurry of snow perhaps. So you can see there is still a little shine on the paper, but I have left it dry for a few minutes. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of salt. You can see here I've just got a small amount of table salt in the dish uh, and I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit over the top part of the painting, mostly uh, around that sort of central yellow area uh, to create some salt blooms. So when the salt goes on the paper it will absorb the moisture and the, uh, the wet paint and create these little sort of pockets of white around the individual granules uh, which look like little blooms or to me like little snowflakes so this is just uh, an extra finishing touch to help that illusion of a little flurry of snow coming up around these little spring blossoms. Now while the salt is getting to work I decided to mix up a little more green uh, and just add a little bit of colour into that foreground. You can see on my palette I decided that I needed a slightly more uh, golden green so I'm adding a bit more twin gold into the mix, mixing it with a touch of ultramarine but mostly with uh, the turquoise that's still on my palette, uh, getting a really nice load of paint onto my brush and then holding it really loosely and just dabbing really gently, sort of using the, uh, the rounded part, the belly of the brush. Uh, just to dab the colour in around the base of the stems of the flowers. Uh, I hope that you can see as well that I've taken care to only loosely mix the green on my palette so that when I pick up the paint on my brush um, there's a couple of different tones within it and this gentle sort of dabbing motion that I'm doing using the sort of belly of the brush you can see here I'm picking up a little bit more twin gold on the tip and just dabbing it around the base of the plants and it's giving us 
this lovely green but it's uh, a tonal green it's a green that's got some different shades in it uh, that become even more apparent uh, when it dries uh, this is just a really nice loose way to create a really simple foreground uh, an impressionistic foreground if you like <laughs> of a little bit of greenery just pushing up beneath the snow and now with that brush with those same greens on it I'm just giving it a wee tap uh, across the uh, across what I've left of the white paper this just uh, makes that big sort of blank bit of snow less blank uh, if that makes sense just adds a little bit more texture into the foreground a slight hint of color and uh, a slight grubbiness that you do naturally get uh, in a fallen snow in a muddy uh, sort of grassy area so now I'm just uh, rubbing away the masking fluid um, I left everything thoroughly to dry so do only do this once it's dry uh, my favourite thing at the moment is this graphics rubber cement pickup tool. <laughs> it's a little bit of a mouthful, uh, but it is just the most fantastic thing that I've found for uh, rubbing away masking fluid, especially if you've got it on your paper in sort of quite large parts, which can be harder to uh, remove without accidentally tearing the paper slightly. But as you can see, I'm just holding the block with one hand and rubbing gently with the other and uh, it comes away like a charm. Uh, so I would highly recommend one of these thingamies. <laughs> if you don't have one, then just rubbing gently with a fingertip will give you the same result. It just may take a little longer. Uh, but now here we have uh, the snowdrops all bright and white again, ready to be painted. So I'm mixing up a slightly uh, lighter green with a little more of the twin gold, so it's uh, a touch yellower than the green that is uh, dotting the background. And I'm going to use this to basically just fill in the white spaces that I've left for the leaves. And I'm using a small round brush to do this, uh, but at this point, any brush that you are comfortable using and that has a fine enough point to fill in these slim lines uh, will work like a charm. I think a flat brush would also be really good here uh, to go along those sort of narrow lines. And there you can see that I am picking up um, a little bit of the darker colour that's on my palette as well, just to vary the tone and the shading on these leaves. A little bit of darker colour around the base of the leaf, closer to the root, uh, and then a little bit along one side will give the impression of a curve and the uh, light striking one side of the leaf so it will be paler. And I'm just going to repeat this process uh, basically for the leaves and the stems of all of this little cluster of snowdrops here. Uh, this is uh, just uh, relatively simple to just go along all the sort of clean white lines that have been left by the masking fluid and fill them in carefully using a small brush. Uh, I do tend to leave a little bit of the white outline peeping through uh, just as it really helps with a, uh, a richly coloured background like this, it helps to differentiate the stems from that sort of bright busy background and helps them to stand out. So I'm just going to continue this process, skipping ahead a little bit with the camera, uh, just so that you don't have to watch another 20 minutes of me uh, colouring in leaves. Uh, but this one I thought I'd show you, just because the masking fluid went on slightly raggedly and left um, a couple of gaps where the that sort of bright golden blue is peeping through. So I thought I would make the best of this and uh, sort of paint around that slight gap you can see right up at the top third 
of the leaf there. Uh, just the impression perhaps that um, a, a little animal or a little snail or something has perhaps had a nibble at that leaf and left a hole for the um, that lovely bright golden glow to peep through. And it is uh, important, of course, to remember to properly sort of base your your plants with the uh, greenery that you've already put down uh, among the snow. So you can see I'm just making sure that all my stems and all my leaves actually connect uh, to those patches of green that I already uh, popped down earlier uh, just by darkening the colour and just really softening the uh, ends of the uh, ends of the stems down so that they do appear to be growing out of those uh, nice little uh, green patches. So I finished those last leaves uh, off camera and now we're moving on to painting the flowers themselves. Uh, since the snowdrops are by their nature uh, white flowers, uh, they really don't need very much. Uh, just a little helping hand in the form of a bit of ultramarine blue. You can see I've got right at the uh, bottom of my palette there that I'm diluting down with plenty of water to give um, a really, really soft bluish uh, tone rather than a sort of bright sweep of blue. Uh, ultramarine can be a wonderfully uh, powerful colour when you let it, uh, but it also works really, really well if you soften it with plenty of water uh, and it just acts as a perfect shadow when you are painting white things. So you can see I'm being quite tentative with it at first and just using it literally to just paint in the slightest palest shadow uh, just used to define the individual petals. So with this one I'm just curving it round and we're getting the shape of that central petal beginning to come out of this uh, slightly more blobby overall shape. I cannot emphasize enough just how much water you need to create this effect. This is definitely far more water than paint at this point but in my opinion, uh, this is the easiest way to get a really good uh, natural looking shadowed effect on white flowers. And you can see I'm not covering the flower entirely with it. You can see with this one I've done just here, the main shadow is underneath on this left petal where it would naturally be cast by this larger petal. I'm only putting it on uh, half of the uh, these little uh, buds, these petals here. Uh, make sure you've got plenty of the actual white uh, peeping through, that lovely bright white paper that we so carefully preserved with the masking fluid. You want plenty of that to show through because that's the, uh, the sort of true colour of the flower where we imagine the sun is hitting it and we're getting that lovely vibrant white popping out of the paper. So the ultramarine is just there uh, just to give a hint of shadow and to really emphasise the, uh, the whiteness of the flower itself. So now I'm happy with how the snowdrops themselves look. Uh, I'm using a little more of this uh, lovely pale ultramarine wash to uh, add some texture into the snowy foreground. I'm putting it on quite lightly and quite loosely and as you can see keeping a tissue handy uh, just in case I put it on uh, too darkly or with too much water like you'll see here. You can just dab it out with some clean tissue uh, and all is well. I'm trying to be a little bit careful here because uh, I did already spatter a little bit of colour onto the foreground so I'm trying not to disturb that too much and sort of create like a muddy smear. So <laughs> I'm trying to put the uh, very pale blue on really lightly uh, and just basically go around 
and create a little bit of texture, just the impression perhaps that this uh, blanket of snow isn't quite smooth, there's some lumps and bumps, perhaps there's even more buried shoots, uh, little buried snowdrops underneath that snow just waiting to push up uh, and break through that carpet of white. And now for the finishing touch, I'm just going to spatter over a little bit of extra white. This is the lovely opaque white gouache that I used earlier. You can see on my palette just with a fan brush and a little water and some gentle tapping against the handle of another brush. I'm trying to be quite careful and quite delicate, uh, but this is also just giving the impression of a little tiny flurry, extra little white spots of snow coming over where I've laid down the greenery perhaps a snowfall is just starting. So now the painting is finished uh, and fully dry. It's ready for me to remove uh, from the paper block, which is uh, very exciting. <laughs> really pleased with how this one turned out. You can see uh, some of the little salt blooms in the middle there. They worked pretty well. Give that a uh, lovely snowy texture along with the little spattering of white gouache. So now I'm just going to use my uh, dusty, tiny uh, Swiss Army knife, pen knife, here to just carefully separate the, uh, the first sheet from the block. Just going in there and really gently just working the little blade uh, around the paper quite delicately. Uh, I'm not pushing, I'm not really putting any uh, real pressure on it, I'm just gliding it along and the paper is actually coming off really, really nicely, even nicer. Uh, than I'd hoped, so I'm so pleased with how this turned out um, for many reasons. Um, of course, I think everybody has their own way of uh, doing this process. Some people, I believe, like to use a palette knife uh, or a craft knife, uh, exacto knife, that sort of thing, but uh, this is how I have done it. <laughs> if anybody has any tips, I would gladly take them. Uh, this is my first time using a watercolour block like this, uh, but overall, uh, I'm really thrilled with how this has turned out. There we go, lovely and clean paper underneath that beautiful cotton paper ready uh, for my next painting. Uh, and there we are, a lovely clean uh, painting. <laughs> done and done. So there we have it, a glimpse of spring. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope this lovely bright spring painting perhaps brightened your day a little. Uh, if you'd like to see any more of my work, please follow the link below where I have a Patreon page. You can sign up for as long or as short a time as you like with uh, lots of free use uh, reference photos and extra tutorials to try. Uh, but that's all from me today. Uh, please do stay tuned to Lois Davidson's channel for the rest of the week for her wonderful upcoming demonstrations. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you all again soon on the next Morgana Mondays. So that's all from me. Wishing you all a wonderful rest of the day and very happy painting. <laughs>